My name is Kate Larkin. I'm a doctor in uh, marine science, having done a PhD in marine science um, quite some years ago now. Um, I am director of research at Re uh, Seascape Belgium, which is a consultancy uh, in Belgium working across the marine and maritime field and domain. Um, I am also the deputy head of the EMODnet Secretariat. And EMODnet is a, a European Union initiative. It's the European Marine um, Observation and Data Network. It's funded by uh, DG Mare of the European Commission um, and it's a long-term data service for marine data. So it's basically um, collecting, integrating, standardizing marine data um, for everybody's use as a public service. Um, and we work together with um, all sorts of marine and maritime stakeholders from uh, research, industry, policy, civil society, to make sure that the marine data and information um, is available to everyone um, to manage our seas um, and to have operations at sea. One question is, how did I become a marine scientist? Um, when I was at school, I really naturally went towards um, the natural sciences, meaning that I really loved uh, biology and chemistry from an early age, but I also did a lot of uh, physical geography. So looking more at the, the planet, uh, the geology um, of the environment and those things together, I was always somebody that liked the bigger picture. So I decided I didn't want to do a degree in one particular topic. I really wanted to find something that could combine um, my sort of passion for the natural world, but also my interest in, in science. Um, but I'm also quite uh, creative as a person. I, I did a lot of music when I was at school, so I wanted something that would set the stage maybe in the future to combine these things. Um, so I decided to look for a degree in natural science, which it can take many forms. But in England, where I did my degree, uh, you typically choose two um, sciences or two uh, topics that you will study most and then you can do other smaller uh, topics along the side. So I took, for example, biology and geology as my two majors in my degree and that was at the University of Birmingham in the UK. Um, I then did um, small courses in, say, archaeology or uh, chemistry, things that would complement what I was doing. And this was fantastic to have this opportunity to mix and bring in other subjects that really match together. Um, but already when I was at the University of Birmingham, I had um, looked at oceanography as a career. Um, but I had made the decision at the time to not go down the route of a, a, a first degree in oceanography. I wanted to do the more classic uh, sciences. But my final degree um, thesis, I decided to do in marine sciences. So I vividly remember, even though Birmingham is in the middle of the UK, there's nothing to do with the sea. Um, I got in contact with people in Southampton, which is very famous for its oceanography. And I made trips between Birmingham and Southampton to do my thesis um, with um, professors there. So that's when I first really embarked on the journey towards marine science. And as I was doing the thesis and loved it, um, it was about phytoplankton in the ocean. Um, I then got really interested in, in oceanography and that's what led me directly after my degree to look into what could come next. And I applied for a, a doctorate um, course in uh, marine science. Um, this was where what I love about oceanography is you really bring together all the sciences. Um, so you really need to know about you know, the physics of the ocean, the biology living in the ocean, the chemistry which impacts that biology and the geology of the sea floor. So it's really if somebody's interested in in lots of different natural sciences, I think marine science is a great career uh, and a great area. It's also great if you love engineering because you can get involved in the technology side. We need to monitor the ocean. We have sensors, we have platforms. Everybody's at the moment innovating those to really make them smaller, so miniaturized sensors to make them more cost effective so we can monitor more of the ocean and that we can monitor new things. So, for example, we now have some, um, some sensors that can take DNA samples of the of the biology of the ocean. And this is really where things are going. So I think if you love yeah, science, engineering, um, anything in that mix, then, then marine science is a, is a good option for you. typical working day for me um, I will have uh, you know the day before a plan of what that day might look like and quite often it really changes which is actually something in general that I love and um, it's not um, 
uh, it's structured, but it can really uh, change and has to be flexible. So I will, for example, today, um, you, you wake up, I have an early morning call with the European Commission. We have a weekly uh, meeting with them. So that's an important update where we will connect with policymakers and explain how the eModNet uh, initiative is going, what we've been doing during that week. We'll typically have had some external meetings where one of us in the team will have presented uh, our initiative and all of the marine data to um, a policymaker or an industry. So we catch up on, on that. Um, we then um, discuss what's coming up next. Uh, for example, we are currently organizing a big international conference, which is our flagship event. So that um, comes into it as well, where we will be um, designing programs, which actually takes a lot of you know, skill in terms of knowing which experts to bring to the table um, to really showcase um, all the work that people do. Again, the collaboration, uh, briefing people on um, if they're joining a panel, exactly what kind of content they will uh, want to bring forward. Um, but equally, we also discuss a lot of technical things. So I would should mention that in addition to all the communication and diplomacy, so the marine science um, uh, capability that or expertise that I developed earlier on in my career is still and very much um, used because I will um, join conversations on the, the technical side of the data um, where we're discussing you know different types of parameters in the ocean you know chlorophyll um, uh, from phytoplankton or um, the deep sea biology um, we need to really know the topic area to be able to inform and, and have informed discussions on that. Um, also, in an average day, I'll be reviewing a lot of um, communication text. So with colleagues, we design um, you know, articles, uh, annual reports, uh, re uh, technical reports from meetings. And all of this needs um, scientific communication um, sort of training and being able to, to technically assess the text, which, which brings in my marine science expertise. So this is what I really enjoy because it's really bringing in a, um, the whole overview of my marine science background um, and uh, the creative side as well. So if I talk a little bit about the different skills that I use every day and actually how I've got there, because it takes years, of course, to, to hone these skills, um, when I finished my uh, PhD in, uh, in marine science, I realized that although I loved being out in the field collecting the data, I wasn't such a fan of being in the lab the whole time and then writing up the scientific papers or the whole pathway of this. What I did love was looking at the results in, in the bigger picture and bringing these together and um, communicating and, and being the sort of knowledge broker, if you like, across the different uh, many m marine and maritime stakeholders. So something that I felt that I was you know, good at or naturally liked um, was the connecting uh, across and, and the really um, bringing different knowledge together and making sure people had that. So I looked for jobs after my PhD that were more in the project um, management or oversight and communication f fields of, of marine science. So my initial um, first position was um, a postdoctoral position, but it was a mixture of project management and science. Um, then I became more a project manager for a, a European project. Um, on ocean observation and for this it really honed my skills on being able to first uh, have project management you know skills in, in making sure that people are um, managing projects and that um, deliverables and things are on time but also being able to connect across the different science so I was um, at the core of the coordination team where we had many partners across Europe we had many different you know nationalities many different uh, experts uh, many who, of whom were much older and senior and more expert than myself. So I would say something that in any science you're collaborating, that's the key, whether it's in your country, your lab, your across Europe or internationally, collaboration is key. So I, um, I, I naturally enjoyed that, but the, the soft skills that you will need is really um, knowing how to communicate with people, both in written and verbal form. A lot of diplomacy, because it's really important that if you're working across borders and um, that things will get misunderstood, perhaps in emails or, or things like this. Um, and the science is what brings everybody together. That's the truth, if you like, the real factual uh, information. And it's really important that you, you stick to those facts and build a community around those facts that um, want to drive forward the knowledge above all else. So I think this is really important. Um, 
that diplomacy I've taken forward to my, my day job now where I work a lot with the European Commission and I work a lot with different stakeholders. So it's important that that you know you put yourselves in the, their shoes if you like and think like a policymaker, think like an industry um, to make sure that you're then communicating in the right way and you tailor that communication um, depending of course on who you're speaking to and who you're presenting to. One of the challenges, but also something I really enjoy um, is the variety in my job. So it can be literally I can have one hour where I'm talking to a deep sea biologist who's planning an expedition out into the North Atlantic and explaining um, what data we need to come back and how we're going to make that data flow into the European uh, data public service and then the next hour I can switch to talking to an industry who's got a coastal observatory um, and wants to have a dialogue with um, with eModnet to, to see how they can share their data more um, then I might join a, a, a policy dialogue where we're explaining about the digital strategy of Europe and how we need to bring um, information technology together with marine science to make sure that um, data are, are, are taking advantage of all the cloud computing and the digital um, twinning that is being uh, produced in the coming years. And then I might um, you know, I'll have a think I have a quick lunch break, but actually something comes in that I have to do a quick review. Um, but, you know, it, it, it's busy, it's very busy. But what I really love is that it's really varied. It really keeps you, you know, you have to really um, have that mindset that you are um, flexible and you're willing to take on changes. We have sometimes an urgent call from the commission on a Friday and we need to deliver the same day, you know, some some key um, knowledge that they will use in a policy briefing for their commissioner, for example. And this this can happen. Um, then we have things that are much longer term, like this conference I mentioned. We've been planning this for a couple of years, um, even during COVID when it was not sure if it would take place. Uh, but we're now doing it online with 300 people at, at the minimum. And it's going to be a big flagship event. And that's taken months of, of planning. So what is interesting in a a job in marine science is that you will, whatever pathway in marine science you have, there will be multiple timelines. You'll have things to deliver that day, that week, that month, that year, and even looking to the horizon of the, the next few years. And this is something that I think not all jobs have. Um, some jobs are very you know, structured and you really have to deliver for that day and then, um, then not even know what's happening the next week. But for us, it's really both varied in its type um, and its um, form and then the, the time scales as well, which is really exciting because, you know, we've just started a, a decade of ocean science. It's the UNESCO decade of ocean science for sustainable development. So we're really planning the next decade um, as our, our sort of longer term vision, which is really interesting. So if I could advise anybody out there who's interested in, in natural sciences, in the planet, in the environment, in any kind of scientific area, um, but also you know, cares about the future of our planet with, with, with climate change, um, and if you have any uh, ex experience or interest in any of the sciences or engineering, then I would advise you to please just check out um, all the different options for you. For me, I can say that marine science has been a great uh, pathway. It's not something you have to decide when you're 16 to 18 years old. I certainly didn't. Um, I decided to move into oceanography at the age of 21, 22 when I was finishing my degree, um, which was a, 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 you know, a, a natural sciences degree. Um, so I kept my options open as, as much as I could. Um, but it's a really interesting to, career to go down because you can study oceanography as a degree or in post grad um, masters or, or PhD. And then there's so many avenues you can develop your skills into. You can use whether it's engineering or, or natural sciences. Um, and within uh, marine science, there's a huge growing um, career pathways. You've got on the industry side, you've got marine renewable energy like the wind farms that are really extending um, across Europe. Now there's a big vision to 2050 for um, an e a European Green Deal, which will see all industries and, um, and public coming together to, to meet climate targets. And a part of that is how will we use our ocean space going forward? The ocean is um, huge, but it's also getting busy with lots of you know, fishing, maritime shipping, uh, renewable energy, etc. We need people who are smart, who are 
care about the planet, but that are um, able to, to connect together their skills in science and engineering. And this is, I, for me, where STEM is at its most exciting, where we're connecting all our skills together. So this is something I think it would be great just to look out for, check the internet. There's lots of free resources now through UNESCO, through European Commission, um, through all the initiatives. Um, try to get some work experience if you can. Um, there are many places that are offering either internships or really short um, work experience. You can get a flavour um, and just try to connect uh, with, with as many uh, as you can to build a network so you can start seeing what types of things you might enjoy. Um, and then once you have a first degree or position in anything to do with marine science, really the, the network is, is very good. So if you're interested, you can always ask colleagues and senior experts uh, for advice and I'm sure people will be more than happy to point you in a, a future direction. What I would give you as advice for students, for teachers, what I would say is there's lots of resources out there um, for things like ocean literacy. So for example, if you're interested in learning more about the ocean, uh, even before, even if you're not considering oceanography or marine science, um, you can tap in as, as teachers and students to free resources. There's um, initiatives like EU for Ocean, which is a, a big European ocean literacy um, initiative where there's lots of resources, but also um, there's a way that you can download teaching resources to really bring the ocean into the classroom because this is something that um, there are still in most school curricula across Europe. It's uh, quite traditional scientific topics, which are very important, but it's ne not necessarily capitalizing on the fact that now we, we view the planet as a whole, right? We have the environment with the ocean as a huge component of it. And to bring the ocean in is really interesting because you can have concrete case studies, examples, of STEM at work, right? So you need to apply all of the science and engineering that you might be learning, but in a, in a concrete um, case study. So this is where I would point people to, to, to bring um, the STEM that you're doing in your classrooms um, and to make it come alive with examples like, um, even for the ocean, you can bring in economics. So there's the ocean economy, which is the seventh largest economy in the world as an economy because the the marine and maritime industry is huge so even these kinds of topics can really span across science to to economics as well